when Jumping the Broom came around and we were casting Jumping the Broom, her manager called me and said, hey, uh, Megan was gonna come in and audition for the lead, uh, for the part, the part that Paula Patton has. Um, but we know you've already cast it, but she's really prepared uh, her monologue for it. Would you mind letting her still come in and read for that part? I was like, all right, cool. So she went in, she read, and she blew everybody away. And she was so amazing, we said, well, look, we can't make her the lead, but why don't we make her the bridesmaid, you know, the maid of honor? So she decided she was okay with doing that. So on that movie, we got reconnected. Friendship, nothing but that. It wasn't until the premiere of Jumping the Broom, at the after party for Jumping the Broom, her and I are talking, and I'm like, you know how you can have two conversations happening at once? It's like this conversation, like, hey, how you doing? And then it's like, wait a minute. Something going on here. <laughs> no, you know. So then, uh, I was, my book had just come out, so I was about to go on a book tour, and um, I said, "Well, uh, I gotta go on tour for a minute. Um, maybe we hook up when I get back." And she's like, "Okay, cool." So when I got back, I just said, "Okay, let me see if something really." So I texted her, and she's like, "Yeah, when are we hook up? Let's go." We went out, you know, hung out, and it wasn't probably till the third day. And and then, by the way. All of our conversations have been about Jesus. Amen. You know, I mean, we were on set of Jumping the Broom. It was about what church she was going to and what she was going through. So there was always, I knew always that she was a Christian. You know, if that hadn't been there and on my side too, we would never have been connected. But it was always based in our relationship to God and wanting to live that out. And so it wasn't until the third date when I was like, whoa, Lord, I told you I didn't want to date you. An actress, Lord, Jesus, help me, right? And, and from that, really from that third date on, um, you know, we just uh, really began to come close. You know, she said that she knew we were gonna get together. She, no, she said she knew I was her husband at least six months before we went on that date. I know, sometimes I think about it, I say, what? I mean, that's so silly, you've been praying. Lord, I'm praying, I better act right. What else you got up in there, you know? What else God tell you, you know? Shoot. Because it just was not a reality, you know, at least in the natural, but in the spiritual, you know, in the spirit, you know, it was, it was very much a reality. So, um, I don't know how much time we have. It looks like we have, what, five more minutes or two minutes? Uh, two or three minutes. Okay. Maybe time for one more question. Yes, ma'am. Have you ever lost a job because of your faith? Good question. Uh, have I ever lost a job because of my faith? No. I have not lost a job because of my faith. Now, there are projects that have, people have not brought to me. Um, there are certain things, you know, conversations that I've had that people say, hey, that's not, that's not for me. You know, it's not for Devon. No, 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 we want to send this and that. You know, that, that happens uh, quite frequently. Um, but I've just come to a peace that, you know what? God's gonna bring me what he wants me to make. And I'm gonna be faithful over the few that I got and do my best to be excellent in those and trust it they're gonna have the impact that they're supposed to have. You know, on a movie like Karate Kid, you know, I didn't, I didn't have a whole lot of movies that were on my development slate, but I said, all right, you know, Karate Kid's an opportunity. You know, dug in and, and made it the best that, that we could. The movie comes out, it makes, it was the, one of the most profitable movies for the studio in the past 10 years, wow. right? So it doesn't really, it's not about the volume, it's, it's about the quality of what you have. So I, again, I've never lost a job but I absolutely have, have not. I've lost projects. There was a question right there. Hi, Mr. Uh, Franklin. We have some questions here at the table. It's a two-fold. 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 The first fold of the two-fold <laughs> is um, when you make these movies, who is your target audience? Because you want to inspire people, okay? The second fold. <laughs> should Christians, should actors be watching Hollywood movies? Okay, uh, the second part, yes. Uh, <laughs> because again, I, I think that we lead ourselves down a wrong path when we say Hollywood movies, right? There are, I mean, there are so many different types of movies. If you paint the brush Hollywood movie, Passion of the Christ falls in Hollywood movie. You know what I mean? So we can't paint a brush of Hollywood movies. We have to take each movie as it is and say, okay, maybe I don't need to watch Saw, okay? <laughs> You know what I mean? Maybe that's not my thing, you know? Or, or you say, okay, what is this about? And you check this out and say, oh, no, that, this doesn't resonate with me. You gotta look at each movie and make a decision about what that content is and, and where that fits for what God is calling you to watch or to listen to at that time. So 
I don't subscribe to a broad brush, so don't watch Hollywood movies. The, sec the first part of the question was, remind me of the first fold? Oh, talk about it. So, so, so here, here's how it is. Here's how it is. So let's just go to a movie like Jump in the Room, right? At its core, it's a romantic comedy, so we know that it's geared towards women, right? So, no, that's the truth. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's a surprise, you know? If I was doing, you know, jumping the action movie, then that would be for men, right? But, you know, it was a romantic comedy, so we knew it was for women. Um, inside marketing for women, we said, okay, we want to go, you know, in the core of the core, we want to go after women of faith. You know, so we really want to market this film to, you know, Christian women, making sure that they're aware of it, making sure that they understand what it is. So we did a lot of pre-screenings to get that first core activated. So as they got activated, they started telling other women, and so jumping the broom, and then it was on Mother's Day. So then we got, you know, even the older crowd, you know, so but the primary audience for the movie was women, and then inside of that primary audience, we really did a, a concentrated effort on Christian women to get them to and be aware of and embrace the movie. Then we got time for one more, bam. But it's always on the back, ladies first. And then we come up front. Right. Yes, ma'am. a lot of sense. Good, good question. So the question is really about the process of, of spiritual growth, you know, and, and how to, um, as you exercise faith, kind of like what to expect and how can you become more mature in it, right? So for me, as I have grown in, a, in every, every day, every week, every month, I feel like I'm getting stronger spiritually, right? And part of that spiritual power and maturity is to Stop relying on what I see. Okay? This is this is deep, and I don't wanna I don't wanna get so deep we ain't got time to unpack this, right? But I will say this, which is if you say to the mountain, be thou removed, right? He'll remove it, right? Okay. Now the removing of the mountain is truly a matter of perspective. Because what you view as a mountain right now without faith. Once you put your faith on, it's no longer a mountain. This is spiritual maturity for me. This has been my growth, where things that I thought were mountains, as I grow in faith, I realize, that ain't a mountain at all. I just step over that thing. You know? And so, and so literally every week, every month, God is just saying, don't depend on what you see. Where I'm taking you is not regulated to what you see. Have more faith. Have more trust. Have more belief, have more a confidence in me. And the more that I do that, the more I begin to manage those things that may look like obstacles, those things that may come as conflict. And it really gives you the power to manage your perspective and see what God is in everything that you're doing. Uh, last question. Good question. How do you deal with um, a manager who you work for, who is your superior but may not be a good leader, right? Um, look at the relationship um, that David had, right? It was so interesting that the way that David honored Saul, when he could have killed him, he didn't. Because he was still under his authority. So even if you, if you have a manager or superior who's not a good leader, don't allow that to be an excuse to treat them less than the authority that they have. So as long as you're under their authority, you do your best to understand what's being required, and you do it in love, right? And you do it with kindness. Okay, and don't let the chatter in the office, because you know how it is, we all can get in the office, start talking bad about, well, I don't know how they had that job, and they're not good, da 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 and then the chatter in the office gets you out of being the light you're supposed to be. You know what I mean? 
keep honoring that manager, even if they're not a good leader, and God will remove them or he'll promote you. You know, but either one can happen if, if we feel justified in not responding based upon who they are. Okay, we gotta go. Love y'all. See y'all soon. Good job. We can do better than that, man. Put your hands together for that. Very, very good, very good. Very inspirational. Um, Devon will be with us for the rest of the day. So if you get a chance to you know, talk one-to-one -one with him, I'm sure um, throughout the course of the day, he'll be available uh, for your for your one-to-one -one, uh, interaction. Are you both ready for our service? So I would encourage you to hold your space, you know, and let's get ready to, to worship. Uh, God bless you.